Another exercise that we can implement is sending a string that we have read from the user, let's say, to from the child process to the parent process. And that parent process is just going to show that string on the terminal, let's say. How can we achieve that with uh, pipes? So to first start off, we're going to start with opening the pipe. I'm going to say here int. Again, I'm going to use fd. You can change this name. This is kind of generic. fd refers to any sort of file descriptors. Maybe you want to use uh, pfd, that means pipe file descriptors or something else. I do like fd, just fd, uh, usually in these simple examples, but in a bigger project, you're probably going to change that. Anyway, um, here I'm going to open the pipes and say if pipe of fd equals or is negative one, I guess, then we're going to return one. And of course, once we open the pipe, we can fork. So we have two processes. So int process id equals fork. And again, if that fork fails, so if PID is less than zero, then we can return two. And in here, I'm going to say if PID is zero, that means that we're in the child process or child process. In here, what I want to do is read a line of text from the user and send it over through the pipe to the parent process. How can we do that? First, let's start by reading that uh, line of text. We're going to have here a char uh, str of, let's say, 200 characters. There should be plenty for the user to write on. And to get the input, well, first, let's actually print a message. So print f uh, input string. That should be plenty of uh, information. Then we can use the fgets function. And the fgets function is kind of interesting. I have actually made a video on this a while back ago. And that you can check up top. Basically, it takes in first a the string that you want to read into. So in this case, I want to read into str. And it takes in the maximum number of characters that it can actually fit in that string. So that is 200 and, well, the stream that it should read from. And in our case, I want to read exactly from std in because, well, we want to read the input from the uh, user, from the keyboard of the user, okay? And this is nice, this is almost perfect, except that at the end of that string, uh, a backslash n is left and we kind of have to remove it. And since it's at the end, we can say str of str len of str minus one, so that will be actually at the end. So the last character, the last character is a backslash n and we want to set it to be, well, let's say the null terminator like that. You can either use this or you can use just a zero. That's exactly the same thing, by the way. And I should probably include string.h somewhere along here. Include string.h. Nice. Uh, that's, that's the reading part. That's very simple and straightforward. And now comes the part where we need to send that string to the, well, to the parent process. How do we do that? Well, we can start with um, first calling write on the FD of one. And well, we're going to write our str and we're going to write how many characters do we need to write? Well, we can calculate that. We can say str len of str. So that would be all the characters. So if I type in uh, I don't know, hotel or something. That's five characters. So it's going to send five characters through the pipe. But remember that strings in C always have to terminate with that one extra null terminator. So we have to send in six characters. The last one being the null terminator. So I'm going to say str len of str plus one in this case. And of course, surround this with an if just in case it fails, return three. And lastly, we should, since we are in the child process, we don't need to uh, read anything. So we can close FD of zero. And once we're done writing, we should also close FD of one. Nice. That's basically everything that we need to do in the child process, right? Hmm. Let's continue. Let's continue implementing the parent process. So here's the parent, the parent process in here. We first need to close the FD of one. We're never going to write 
to the pipe using the parent process. And then we should, well, declare first a string. So I'm gonna say char str of 200. So this is different. This is a different str from this one, of course, because we're again, in a different process. And in here, I want to first read that string, right? So I'm gonna call what? What else? I'm gonna call read on fd of zero, because that's our reading end of that pipe. We want to read into str and we want to read how many, how many characters do we want to read? Well, it's, we cannot just do str len of str because str is not initialized. It doesn't have any valid values. So we cannot do that. We have to do like we did in the previous video that you can check up top uh, regarding arrays. We have to first send the number of characters through the pipe. So it, know, it knows however many it should uh, read on the parent process. So in here, I'm gonna say write onto fd of one. What do we want to write? Well, we want to write the number of uh, characters, but we cannot just say str len of str plus one because we need to pass in here a reference, right? And to have a reference, we need a variable, at least in this case. So I'm gonna actually store this n, this is the number of characters plus the terminator, of course, in the in here on the stack. I'm gonna say int n equals this, and then I can pass the address of n. Notice I cannot just pass the address of all this because there's no address for this thing, this is just evaluated on the spot, right? In the CPU itself, not on the memory. But if we say int n equals all this without the address, then this n is in the memory somewhere and then we can take its address here. And I can say n and then of course I want to just write a size of int. And notice here, we are only writing an int and when we're reading it, we're gonna actually read here into an int n. So read of fd of zero, into n size of, again, int. We know that we're reading an int, so we don't need to actually pass in again the size of that. But with arrays or with strings, we kind of have to. Okay, so now that we actually read that n, we know that we can do n bytes in here. And just to be complete in the way we are reading and writing everything, since, you know, I have size of int here, I should have size of here as well. So I should say I have uh, size of char times n. Even though size of char is just one byte, just uh, to be consistent everywhere. And here as well, we should say size of char and multiply it with this whole expression here, which is a bit longer, I know, but it's it's probably fine. We can actually change this to an n instead of act, uh, calculating it again and say just times n. So that would simplify things. Okay, amazing. We should also add error checking. So everywhere in here, we should do that. So say if it's less than zero, then return, I don't know, number four. That's an error code, by the way. It's not an error message, but it's something close to that. The nice thing about having error codes in your, well, in your program is that if you, if your program sort of fails for whatever reason, it's gonna say uh, somewhere that, uh, that the process exited with uh, error code five. And you would already know where that happened. You're not gonna have to search for it anywhere. So, okay, we have this, ft of zero, uh, str, size of char times n, size of char times n, so that's perfect. And we can simply just print on the screen, say here, received, received percent s, say that, and the backslash n, and we can pass in here str, and it should be already valid because we have sent that backslash zero. Remember that str len of str counts all the characters up until the null terminator. So we count all of them, and we also add one for that null terminator. So we send it through the pipe so that when we read it inside this str here, it's already with the backslash zero or with the null terminator uh, in the string itself. We don't have to add it afterwards. We could also do that afterwards, but I think it's just extra work for just one single byte of data sent. 
if you want to be extra, extra efficient, you could actually do that if you wanted. And lastly, we should actually close the file descriptor, so close off FD of zero and wait, since we're in a parent process, we should wait for the child process to finish first before exiting ourselves. Now, if I try to launch this, it's going to say input string. I'm going to give it, oh no, this is a test and hit enter. And you'll notice that we indeed get the received string back. And this is from the parent process. And this input string part is from the child process. So this is uh, how you can send uh, a string from uh, one process to another using a pipe. And you can do this with a named pipe as well. You can do this with a file even. Uh, if you really need to, but uh, there are other ways you can do this with files for strings. Um, but really, I like this approach because it not only applies to strings, it applies to any type of array and it's consistent. Another way I saw uh, being implemented is to write the whole string with the, with the null terminator. And instead of reading uh, multiple characters here, just read in a while loop, just read one character at a time. And once you hit the null terminator, uh, stop reading and that's about it. <laughs> but uh, I think that's just uh, too many read operations and I don't think that's too efficient. That's You're better off just sending it a bit of uh, a few more bytes. Those four bytes aren't gonna hurt much. This int just four bytes. So it's probably gonna be fine. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.